Welcome, I'm Fayaz Qureshi. Our guest on The Living Legends has been incarcerated twice for his stance on social justice. He has served as a member of parliament and is involved in charitable causes. 30 years ago, he was in the heart of the struggle for multi-party politics in Kenya. For a man who is a staunch Roman Catholic, he has had the pleasure of being granted an audience by the Pope. In his hometown, they refer to him as Mtumishi. We hear from former Runyenges MP, Jeru Kathango. Well, Kathango. Thank you, Mama. Welcome. It's, it's an extreme pleasure and honor, a privilege to have you as a guest on the Living Legends. Yes. You are a true living legend. I'm Welcome. I'm not sure that I am a living legend. All I can say is, I am one of the Kenyans that believe that heroes must be respected, thought of, and placed well in society. If that happens to me, I will be thanking God, because legends are also heroes. Spot on. They should be appreciated. They should appreciated, be appreciated across the board. Across. Welcome once again. Tell us about your early life in education. Well, I started my life in 1958 in education. Mm -hmm. When I was admitted for what they called then the nursery school in my village. Right. And uh, I was uh, attending the morning class for the nursery and the priest in charge of my Catholic parish mm -hmm. would attend after, after and met me every afternoon for standard work to practice what I would do maybe two years later. And in 1960, I was admitted for standard one. And since then to now, I'm still in school because let me tell you, the academic classes I went through, the common entrance, I went through the CP, I went through the East African uh, Certificate of Education, and later on in Form 6 and universities and colleges, is something that prepared me for life education that I pick on every day, at least a paragraph for my intellect. And I'm Life itself it. is a school. It's a school. A complete learning experience. Learning experience. You never stop learning. I have never stopped. I don't think I'm going to. Although I think that every day brings me very closer to the end. And I will be prepared for it. All ready for it, huh? Yes. Your first fallout with the state was in 1975, huh? Yes. You defied orders to suppress protests uh, mm. against the murder of Jim Kariuki. Yes. Uh, and you got jailed for five years. Five years. Tell us that story. I'm telling you. So one day, first of all, in 1974, I met J.M. Karaoke because I was involved in what we called the uh, sport hunting. And sport hunting is that uh, you get licensed by the Kenyan government to shoot animals, particularly if they exist in any, in any, in any national park, mm -hmm. and uh, reduce the numbers. But you don't just reduce. You actually reduce those numbers, have the animal and its items, and sell them. And so J.M. Karaoke was the assistant minister for tourism. And uh, at some point, we met. And he said, look, if you are doing this, then um, I will be interested maybe to have one or two items from you. Particularly if you are going this year or next year early, maybe I could have uh, an, el an, an elephant task, one or two. Mm -hmm. And give me, please, you know, a uh, leopard skin. And I said, fine, sir, I will, I'll, I'll try. That's how I met J.M. Karaoke. Okay. And we continued as friends as uh, we were exchanging. So that was the point where your friendship began. Started, mm -hmm. right? And, and so, by the time that uh, we were coming to March of uh, 1975, right. we had done quite a lot with J.M. And in fact, during the preceding week, where J.M. was all over the place doing things, maybe saying bye-bye, whatever it is. I met him once or twice in February, about 24th, 25th, and 26th. And uh, it is actually after that right. that we were told J.M. was missing. And that touched me a lot. 
Because one, this is a man who had done a few things together in Nanyuki, in the budus and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the fields of the animals. Right. And now that he has missed, I got interested. And getting interested, all over Nairobi and everywhere, people were saying that they have killed JM. Some of them didn't know. Some of them were sure that he's gone because he had been picked from Hilton Hotel. And I went to Hilton to ask what happened to my friend. And one of the people that we were always with for coffee said, that man was picked by one Ben Gedi. Ah. That is when my story started. And uh, when I talked to Terry later, Terry is JM's wife, great woman, and she is still around here. And I would say, because of that, may every wife of JM and all their children continue to know that we remember you in our prayers, and may God bless you with strength. And therefore, personally, when it had been confirmed that JM is gone, then I decided that uh, maybe because JM is my friend, it is that I should be able to know why he was killed. So you spoke out. So at the military level, I was an officer, and with the fellows that I associated with as officers like me, I told them that was not the government to support. And that is where my problem started. But then, sometimes around there, Njomu Kenyatta, the first president of the Republic of Kenya, and disappeared from the public because of the demonstrations that were taking place in Nairobi then. And we wanted to know where did the president go to? And therefore, because of those demonstrations, the military council, security council, military uh, 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 pharaohs, you know, from the bases, mm -hmm. decided that they were going to look for Jomo Kenyatta so that they can bring him out to give the country confidence. And that is when they organized that they would bring Jomo Kenyatta to Kenya cinema you know, at the heart of the city, right. at lunch hour, on the 25th of March, 1975, so that we can give him a salute and uh, have the air salute, you know, up here, you know, with all the jets and so forth and so forth, mm -hmm. with the military cavalry right. and the military characters from Navy and from the Air Force marching across the streets of Kenyatta Avenue and what have you, to give Kenyatta the salute. I was going to be one of the platoon commanders right. to give that salute. Mm -hmm. And I said, because I know that we are doing this against the people, because of a friend of mine that was assassinated, I choose not to do it. Of course, you were arrested after the Saba Saba events. Yes. Uh, that was with Edward Yogi. Uh, George, George Anyona, Anyona uh, Professor Kariuki. Edward Yugi, uh, Professor Ngotho Kariuki, uh, you were detained, tortured, yes. charged with sedition and convicted. Yes. Uh, in this manner, when Mwakenya started, I had personally gone to Britain and I was there with Ngugi Wationgo, hmm. uh, 1983-84. But then 1986, 87, that is when a lot of arrests were conducted. That time, some of us decided, no, let's go back home. And uh, I moved from London and I came to Nairobi. Established a small business on Moy Avenue, you know, and uh, it is in Moy Avenue where we started coordinating activities about the clamor for multi party politics. Myself, and John Janyona. So we established permanent office at Magazo Chambers and another office at Musa House next to Missing Lane Market. And uh, so that's where we were coordinating the Sabasaba after Kenneth Matiba and Charles Rubia announced prematurely though, although that is a story for another day, mm -hmm. you know, prematurely, but we decided that we should not cause disunity and we coordinated it until they were arresting themselves on the 4th of July. And one week later, immediately after the Sabasaba, we were arrested on the 11th. And we joined 
them in committee and in Ifasha. You serve uh, people through charity. Uh, take us through this uh, initiative uh, that you started. Good. In 19, I think this is 1980, uh, 1995. In 1995, I went to the Special Branch Kenya, who had confiscated my. Uh, passport for a long time and uh, they agreed that now Kathango you are okay we can give you your passport one year before and that is in Kamukonji mm -hmm. in Kamukonji on July 4th Michuki 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 late Michuki and James Orengo again had collected 73 signatures from members of parliament to start something called UDA. Kenyans, some of those that are young now, think that this UDA is a new UDA. It is not a new order. UDA, United Democratic Alliance, was formed by Michuki and James Orengo in 1994 and it was launched in Kamukonji grounds on that date of July. And I was there, and I went there because I wanted to speak there. And when I went there, James Copio, Gerard Copio, was the master of ceremony. And the guest of honor was Kibaki, Wamalwa, Shikuku, and John Jindenge. Those four were there. And they spoke and they did not give Kathangu, this man Kathangu, opportunity to speak. And I thought, no, this thing has to stop. Because we cannot behave like before. So I went up the rostrum, up the dais, and I said, man, I need to speak here. <laughs> and uh, Gerard Kobio said, no, 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 you are not on the list. And I said, but the people are waiting for you me to talk to that. them. <laughs> yes, the, the people are waiting for me to talk to them. And everybody in that they started saying, Captain, Captain, Captain. So I took the microphone. So you addressed them. Yes. <laughs> and uh, in, while I'm addressing them, then these are the guests of orders decided to leave. And I said, no, there is no problem. What we do now, because I have the microphone, can we have two good gentlemen to come up here and pray for the nation as we close this, the, the, the meeting? In the meantime, because we have seen that we still are discriminated upon, even by our friends, from now on, we shall form a movement that is going to look after the marginalized, the excluded, the needy, and some of those in this society that think they can do things, but they have no opportunities. So that's how it started. That is how it is started. And uh, from the crown. So as it grown from strength to strength? Yes, it grew. And it's helped a lot of people? It has helped a lot of people where we have been looking after needed children, orphans all over the place. We have looked after children that are now serving even in the military, children that are now in uh, medical schools, children that are, and I'm happy about it, great artisans and electricians. You know, that for me, it's beautiful and that is why we are here to say that even if we don't do other things maybe God can bless us because of the one and only one person we have assisted from Galos. Your views on the current uh, political arena and the forthcoming general elections and you're also the Secretary General for Fort Asili. Yes, I first of all must say that I am here to represent a lot of people. Now that Kureshu invited me here, allow me to say that all the people that is starting the reparation movement in this country, I represent him here because I cannot be able to walk away from them and I don't think they can walk away from me. Whether the year in the spirit form because they went before me or physically in this country and because of that I hold the button left by Kenneth Matiba left by Shikuku left by Jaramogi Ogunga Ondinga Masinde Moriru and all the others and because of them I must say this 
that Kenyans, you have finished exactly 30 years from the time that Ford was created in December 1991. In 1992, the Ford split into Ford Kenya and Ford City. And I am the Secretary General to this day of the party Ford City that Martin Shikuku left. From Martin Shikuku, I became the Secretary General. And within this studio somewhere is the chairman of Ford City who came to witness what he said that I am saying. And because you've given me that opportunity, may I say that for what Ford was formed, we have noticed, not, not achieved. And because of that, what has happened is that there has been total reversal of what the intentions of the founders of Ford. And because of that, we are saying, please let us step low and slow because what I have seen there is intense conflict going on between the leaders and some of their supporters and followers. Nations cannot be built that way. The president has to turn down, the Ruto has to turn down, Raira has to turn down because all of them have responsibility that more than 40 million People in this country are people below 35 years. And those 35 years and below are actually waiting for their blessings, guidance, and security. And opportunities. And opportunities. And because of that, we are all relying on them. And in fact, somebody like me, I assume that God the Father is actually guiding them. If they think it is not going the further guiding them, they need to tone down. In the meantime, to say this, from 1983 83, to this day, there is no election I've not presented myself for election other than 83, 88. And because of this, I am promising Kenyans, when all these forces cannot unite because Kenya is a beautiful country, can be created into a rose flower, then Fonda City and Jeru Kathango are going to give themselves to this nation as a candidate actually for the top seat and that uh, Fonda City will be still our party. We, 30 years ago, won the elections, and we want to say 30 years later, 2022, we shall be in the ballot. I wish you all the best, and uh, let's pray to the Almighty for a very, very bright future for Kenya. Yes. And a, there, very, there is, a very peaceful election. There is an organization that is working for the peaceful transition here called Public Affairs and Concerns Council. And very soon they are going to be announcing the programs to make Kenya peaceful. I want Kenyans to pray for us. And you too, Kureshi. We'll do so. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been an extreme privilege. Yes. Uh, you're a very resilient man and a man of principles. It's great to have you as our lead, as our guest on The Living Legends. Thank you, sir. Sande sana. Meshkuru sana. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Sande sana. Good. It has been an extreme pleasure speaking to the former Runyanjas MP, Jeru Kathango, on The Living Legends, a stalwart of charity, social justice, and multi-party politics in Kenya. The message he passes is that Kenyans should reflect on the need for being just to each other at all spheres of life, and that different opinions are not hatred. Thank you to Mishi Kathango. I'm Fayaz Qureshi. Thank you for joining us.